but uh, Guadalupe is fine. It's always been a good little town. It has the um, lowest per capita income, but it also has the lowest crime rate. A lot of good people. We all get along well together. Politics is not a big thing. My name is Kathy Matsuyama, and I'm the Watershed and Natural Resources Manager for the Guadalupe Napomo Dune Center here in Guadalupe, California. I'm Clarence Benetti, and uh, we're at the Far Western Tower in Guadalupe. Uh, my name is John Perry. It was opened up as a parts store in 1958, and I came to work here in 60, 61. Guadalupe used to have a bad reputation. I hope we've improved it. The old days used to be a really, you heard a rip-roaring community and the, a lot of the big shots from San Maria would come over here and raise hell. And because our attorneys and doctors and so forth, when they wanted to party, this was during probation day, they'd come to Guadalupe and party. And then, and then they would catch heck from their old ladies when they got home and... Well, the wife naturally would blame Guadalupe. And they would blame Guadalupe on it, you know. And <laughs> During bootlegging days, I think you'd get booze in almost every, every establishment on the street. <laughs> I remember that. We're also uh, one of the 10 best secret coastal scapes, according to Sunset Magazine. Along the whole west coast, you know, one of the 10 best secret places to visit. And the thing that makes uh, the Guadalupe Napomo Dunes one of those 10, you know, best kept secrets, it is so secluded and when you go out to the dunes there's very few people there. It makes it very easy for filmmakers to film what looks like a deserted Sahara desert for example the movie Hidalgo um, and it's close to Hollywood. It's some, a three or four hour drive with loaded trucks of Hollywood movie sets. Years back there was a lot of filmmaking here. I know my father-in-law we have the same ranch that we had when he was living. Why they, they, they made that their headquarters. But the people, you know, it's, it's neat, you know, people from all over the area come over here and stand on the sidewalks and watch them film and, and all you guys know how that works. Well, we enjoy it very much. I enjoy working with people and talking with people, you know, and it's always been a great part of my life. But the Ten Commandments out there in the dunes, they had a big, I think over a thousand people and they had uh, in the flats there in the, in the pasture land, they had a big tent city. They had the mess hall and, and a, and a so-called like, I mean, like a mini hospital and everything for the, the, the employees and they made them lunches and all this. And a lot of the ranchers, they lend them their horses and cattle. And they rented us and our horse. I think it was $2 a day. And uh, out here in the sand dudes. My, my father-in-law was the uh, lesser of the cattle that they used in the film and the horses, and it's been, it's been a good life. I've enjoyed it. A lot of those animals never got back to the right ranchers. You know, say, well, for years, they'd go, you know, hey, Joe, what'd you do with my Palomino? Or, you know, or, what's my heifer over there? You know, and they'd all get a big laugh, and there's no. I always like to, like I said, work with people, and I enjoyed doing this kind of work, you know, because you have opportunity to meet many people. A lot of people come to the Dune Center to see this piece of Hollywood film history. More people probably come to the Dune Center here in this really small town in California to um, see the artifacts that we have on display and find out where in the 22,000 acres of the Guadalupe Dunes is the buried film set of the 1923 movie than anything else. I'm the vice president of the Historical Society here in town. And I used to be on there while I was on the city council at one time. I just try to keep this Guadalupe stuff together, you know, or it'll all be if I never, and they asked me what am I going to do with it and if when I, when I pass, you know, I said, oh, the kids will probably throw it out, you know. They would mess up when they were filming, a lot of the time at the Tank of Mountains, they'd, they'd mess it up, you know, mess up a scene, what you guys call it, so that way they had to do it and work an extra day, see, so, stuff like that, you know. So they were a little, what you, a little, what you call it, country wise, you know, because of the, the movies they made here in Guadalupe and the TV commercials collect stuff and people bring me stuff and that uh, claw of the Ten Commandments there, it, it was in my front door when I came to work one morning. I guess over the years I finally made it, made it here to my doorstep. My name 
name's Tina Snyderwind. Uh, I'm the lead ranger here at the uh, Rancho Guadalupe Dunes Preserve, and it's managed by the uh, Center for Natural Lands Management. It's a nonprofit organization. We have a contract with the county to manage the park. Ten Commandments site here, uh, Cecil B. DeMille's uh, 1923 uh, groundbreaking movie uh, was the largest set at, uh, at that time ever to be built. It was 10 stories high. At the time, most buildings were only two stories high. This Ten Commandments site, although a lot of people do come here specifically, they want to see the Ten Commandments site, is off limits to the public, and it is illegal uh, to remove any materials from the site. It is kept a secret, um, and that's because in the past we have actually come up and seen areas where people have been digging, um, trying to remove stuff. It's also been made an archeological uh, landmark. The main set was bulldozed over and, and then covered with sand. Uh, Cecil did not want anybody from the movie industry coming in. It was uh, two months of filming uh, and it took a crew of 1,500 one month just to set up. Yeah, I hear uh, a lot from a lot of the uh, Old timers in Guadalupe, they've been around for years of uh, the uh, crew or the actors from the Ten Commandments actually having chariot races down Guadalupe Street uh, in their spare time for fun. <laughs>